All right. Welcome back. We are just moving along from January the 3rd to January the 13th. We are meeting the speakers for the 2017 You Are Stronger Than You Think Women's Event. And I, I'm just excited because every night it just keeps getting gooder and gooder and gooder. I feel more energized. I feel more excited every single day that we're doing this because it is just confirming. If it doesn't confirm for anybody else, but it is confirming for me what great speakers we have and the great time that we are going to have together as a group. And I am Kendra Tillman. I am actually the host of the 2017 You Are Stronger Than You Think women's event, and I am the founder of StrongerThanYouThink.co. About three years ago, I finally got the courage to host my very first women's event, and here we are on the third event. Yay! <laughs> I should have brought me some confetti that I could throw up in the air. Just, just pretend like you see confetti right now. And I'm just so excited about what what's going to happen in your life as a result of being a part of this really amazing day that we're going to have. Um, there's a lot of conferences that will encourage you and inspire you. And we have every plan to do that, but we're also going to equip you and empower you to walk out of there and make, start making some lasting changes in your life. And just in case your <laughs> my husband is putting his hand over the camera, so he's doing a little magic trick. Hello, I'm still here. <laughs> um, so just in case you want to know the website, I'm going to pull that up for you really quickly because I want to make sure that if you are not registered, you can go ahead and get registered. If you go to Stronger Than You Think, event.com. It has all the details about the event, everything that you can expect about the breakout sessions, the speakers, all of that good stuff. And one of the things that I plan, I try to do with every single session that we've been hosting over the last uh, couple weeks is I make sure I introduce you to our great sponsors because anytime you're going to do something big or amazing, you need other people along the journey with you to help you with that. And so these are my amazing sponsors that we're featuring tonight. We featured um, several of them. And if you go back and look at any of the videos, you have an opportunity to see some of the other sponsors we have. But tonight I'm highlighting the companies that were have helped me be able to pull together our start strong contest now these sponsors each helped me to be able to donate a thousand dollars we're going to give a thousand dollars to a woman that entered our contest um that contest is closed now but the winner will be announced the day of the event and this woman is going to get not only is she going to get a thousand dollars which would have been enough alone by itself, you know, to either start a business, start a ministry, um, take the next step in her career, whatever it is that she needs to use that money for. Not only is she going to have cash money to help her with that goal, but she's also going to have the support of these sponsors. They are giving away coaching services. They're giving away books. They're, um, giving away, um, counseling services. I mean, just, we are setting you up for success so that a year from now, when you come back, whoever this winner is, you will have no reason to say, oh, you know what? I couldn't do it. Nope. Because we will be right there supporting you along the way. So these are my amazing sponsors. There are so many of them um, that, but I just want you to see what great sponsors we have. Um, one of the sponsors that happens to be one of our speakers, um, Stephanie, who's going to be doing our, one of our main sessions in the morning, Coach. Aisha that I'm interviewing tonight. She is also one of our great sponsors. And then there are so many other people that have helped and we'll talk about those people the day of the event. So, but thank you so much to every one of my sponsors who helped me to make this opportunity possible for a woman. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty of why we are having this session tonight. So tonight or tonight's session, we are going to be sitting with coach Aisha. I got to ask her if she minds that I still call her that. <laughs> I don't even know if she likes to still be called that. Are you going to say something? 
the website is still coachaisha.com and I'm still a coach. So. All right, good, good. So you're still Coach Aisha. You're going to always be Coach Aisha to me no matter what happens. <laughs> so, so tonight we're going to sit with Coach Aisha and we are going to talk about how to live an intentional life. Now, um, Coach Aisha, I know that there are several people who probably already know who you are that are part of this community, but there's many people that won't know who you are. So what I would like to do before we jump into to questions and everything like that is to have you go ahead and talk a little bit about who you are and where you kind of are right now on your journey. Well, a little bit of who I am. Uh, I am a communicator who is very passionate about helping people connect to their purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has evolved over several years. I started out in corporate America. I'm actually back in corporate America right now, uh, mm -hmm. but haven't missed it in between. And uh, I work with entrepreneurs in particular to really help them to manage the ups and downs of being in business so that they don't end up failing in so many other areas of their lives. And so making sure they have a sense of balance, whatever balance means to you when it comes to your health, when it comes to your relationships, making sure that they stay confident and built up uh, as they are building that vision that God uh, put in their hearts. And so I've uh, been doing this, been coaching for almost a decade now. Wow. I'm the president of Epiphany Institute. Um, and I, I, one of the things that I think makes me an effective coach is I haven't always done things right. I've had plenty mm -hmm. of ups and downs myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm not only, I'm not coaching from what I've read in a book. I'm telling you mm -hmm. what I have seen, what I've experienced, what I've helped other people through. And you're coaching with a sense of empathy, right? Um, because you, you know, you get what it feels like, you know, you're not like the know-it-all expert, but more of like the concerned friend <laughs> and mentor. <laughs> like, girl, I'm going to help you because I totally get where you're coming from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I and speaking, you know, from the standpoint of when you're birthing something, so whether it's a business, whether it's ministry, uh, when you're getting that thing going off the ground, it's not easy. And mm -hmm. I am going to be in there with you and yes, acknowledge that and not say, oh, all you got to do is X, Y, Z. No, yes. <laughs> but here is the thing, though, is, you know, being able to get to the root of what it is that is keeping us from moving forward. Because you may be saying, oh, I'm just being lazy. I'm just doing it. And there may be a, a real roadblock, whether it's a, a physical mm -hmm. block, whether it's an emotional block, and being able to identify what that thing is that, that you keep running into that won't let you move to that place that you want to be and let's blow it out of water yes and and what I, and the reason why i wanted to talk to you tonight so at my at the event that's coming up on the 21st um coach aisha will um she's going to be our mc the MC is in the house. MC Aisha is in the house. I might, I might even rap for it. <laughs> oh, that would be great. <laughs> Make sure we get that on video. <laughs> so she'll be our. She will. She will be our MC, but she's also going to lead. Um, a breakout session, the one that is for entrepreneurial women, because I know that that's her heart and her passion. Um, and she has already worked with so many entrepreneurs and she knows the heart of entrepreneurs, what their needs are, what they're, what they're struggling with and everything. So I thought she would be the perfect person to lead that session. And for tonight, I wanted us to talk about how to live an intentional life, because I know that that is something that she um, really is passionate about and she talks a lot about um, you have like this tagline that says um, on purpose like doing things on purpose so what I want to do is talk right now a little bit about um, how did you come to this message like was there something that happened in your life that got you to this point where you where like, you know what, I really want to talk to people about purpose and, and encouraging them to live in their purpose and live in a more intentional life. I think the defining moment for me, and, and this is a moment that so many of us have experienced, is when you wake up and you look around and you say, okay, this is my life, is this it? Mm -hmm. And on mm -hmm. paper, you may look really successful. You may have, have checked a lot of those boxes off of your list that you wanted to accomplish. But at the end of the day, you're still not feeling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And when I found myself in that place, goodness, it's probably been 15 years ago now, I couldn't figure out how to get out of it. And what right. I discovered was that it all came back to purpose. Mm -hmm. And when you're in 
in your purpose, when you discover your purpose, and when mm-hmm. you're in your purpose, I tell you, you can go through, you know, just about anything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how challenges you face, doesn't matter how hard it is, doesn't matter how broke you are. When you know you're living on purpose and that what you're doing is bigger than you, you know, I mean, just as Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for good to them who love God, to them they're called according to his purpose. And so mm-hmm. being able to know why did God create me and what am I here for and how do I take all of these, you know, unique and sometimes quirky things about me and then use those to serve somebody else. When I figured that out for myself, everything started to click. And I wanted that sense of joy and passion and just this new life for everybody else. And I thought I was the only person that didn't have it. And then as I started to talk to other yeah. people, I found out everybody else was experiencing that same thing. Everybody's walking around like, is this it? Is this my life? I got a single house. I got a nice car. I got 2.5 kids. And I'm going to keep it <laughs> Right. So how do we find that happy? And I believe that that happy is really connected to your God-given purpose. And not only figuring it out, because some of the people, a lot of people know it, but then they're still not living it. Mm-hmm. You know what? You know what I was thinking about when I, because I, of course I knew that this is what we would be talking about. So um, there's this race that I like to run every year. It's called Pat's Run, and it's um, in like in, in, in memoriam for um, Pat Tillman who died um, f- fighting in a war, and he was here based in Phoenix. And he used to go to ASU um, and everything. And so they have this huge race for him every year and it keeps growing every single year. Well, last year's race in 2016, the theme of that race was live your dash. And I just love that. And And that wasn't the first time I heard that term, but it made me just, to me, it was very empowering. And it made me think about, because the dash is the time between, you know, on your tombstone between the time you were born and the time you die. And on your tombstone, that's all you got, right? That's all you got is you got the day you were born and the day you die. And then there's this dash. And so what are you doing with that dash is what this what we're really talking about is that how are you living a more intentional life so if you were to share two or what two or three strategies would you share for how we can live a more intentional life in the different areas of our life whether it's in our work or our relationships or our relationship with god so in each of those three areas i found that we're somewhere on a spectrum when it comes Mm -hmm. to living intentionally number Mm -hmm. one it's, I don't know what I want. Mm-hmm. Number two, it's, uh, I'm afraid to go after what I really want. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it's successful, maybe it's successful, but I'm still not going after what I really want. And the third one uh, is when your actions don't line up with your intention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I just want to take a second and, and, and have this conversation with you about each of those areas. So that first one, again, being, I don't know what I want. Yeah. Um, a lot of us find ourselves in that place career-wise, when it comes mm-hmm. to our, our relationship, I'll be honest, I'm a single woman. I've mm-hmm. never been married. Mm-hmm. And part of that is because I, I've spent the majority of my life not knowing what I want. Do I want to be married? Do I not want to be married? I don't know. I kind of like, I like, do I want to? I mean, yeah. like being able to really admit to myself, this is what I want or this is what I don't want. And until we get beyond that, you're not living intentionally. Mm. That's good. Not, oh, I think, I think that that is simple, but it's huge. Like uh, the people that are watching right now, I w- I want them to ask themselves and you don't have to leave a comment, but you could, if you want to leave a comment, you can leave a comment. What do you want? Like, if you think about your life, what is it that you really want? And, and that's some, that's not always the easy question to answer. Right. Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, this is one thing that we do often as Christians too. We can get lazy with this thing mm-hmm. and be like, well, I just want God's will for me. Right. He wants me, that's what I want. Well, he said we have dominion. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. And, and he, he puts the desires of our heart in us. Yes. So it's already in there. Mm-hmm. But it's up to us to search those things out. And so you can't just go through life leaving, you know, waiting on God to blow you one way or the other. You've got to put in the effort to be able to dig out what is it that you want for me and not just wait for him to drop it in your lap. Absolutely. You Absolutely. Feel honestly with yourself. Yes, yes. Because then you can't be mad when you don't get what you want when you didn't even know what you wanted. Like, okay, if you don't, right, if you don't know what you want, then how are you going to know when it shows up, right? 
that's right. And that's the problem with so many people. And, and I'll tell you, the flip side of this too is that people will, you know, you say, okay, I want the progression. Mm-hmm. So if I want this job, I want to be in this job. If I have this house, I want to be in this house. I'm, and so you think, okay, the what I want is just to keep getting better. But have you really stepped back to think about what comes with those things? Yes. So if you get that promotion, how does that impact the other things that you said you wanted in your life? How does that affect your relationship with your children and the things that maybe you've come to enjoy doing? Are you still going to be able to do those things or not? Is it worth it? Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. But that's a conversation that you need to have with yourself before just automatically assuming the next thing, the bigger thing is what I want. Because you might be very content just saying, I'm good right here. This is where I want to stay. There may be people around me that say, well, you ought to want this and you ought to do this and you ought to have that. But it doesn't line up with what you want in other areas of your life. So be honest with yourself about that. And, and tell other people that too. And it doesn't mean you're better. Yeah, and that that's good. That is really great because yeah, like not letting other people t- define for you what it is that you really want. That's good. What about what did you yeah. know? So let's go yeah. back to number two. What was number two? Yeah, and that actually we segue perfectly into number two. So you know, number two is you know I'm afraid to go after what I really want, and this was a, a trap that I found myself in in business. Even after I had stepped out there, I had started a business, had become an entrepreneur, was doing, you know, a lot of the things that were on my list, you know, I had written books, I was a professional speaker, doing meetings, mm-hmm. so some of the things that I really wanted, I wasn't putting the energy and effort into those things, and I, I see a lot of people, and Kendra, you, you talked about this in the very beginning, when you said, okay, I have finally worked up the courage to host my first women's event mm-hmm. three years ago. How many years had you been wanting to do that? So before that, three years before, the, you know, before starting. So it must have been like 2011. So that was like five years ago. Yeah. So you've been wanting to do that three years before you mm-hmm. did mm-hmm. And you did a whole lot of other stuff in those three years. You right. You were, very, you were very active and you were very successful in a lot of areas Mm -hmm. but that was the thing that you were really wanting to do right and so you know I challenged us to step back and to say okay maybe I'm successful by other people's standards Mm. but am I going after what I really want and it may look completely different than what you're doing now and it may mean that you have to start back on the bottom where, you know, maybe you're very right. successful now, you're making a lot of money now, mm-hmm. and the thing that you really want may require you to humble yourself, go back to ground zero. I, I slept in somebody's guest room, mm-hmm. you know, after yes. having my own home, buying a house in my twenties, but it required me to do some things, make some sacrifices, and, and you know, kind of step back from who I was used to being uh, in order to be the person that I knew God had really created me to be. Yeah. And I, when you said that about, um, you know, you may have to step back. I, I actually was thinking about that is that, are we willing to humble ourselves? Right. And say, you know what? Okay. I've gone down this road, but I need to turn around and go back. Or I'm going to take what I learned from this and I'm going to reinvent myself. And maybe that's what needs to happen. Right. And that, and that can seem a little bit daunting, but there's like, um, I, I was reading this book and it talked about the 80, you know, give yourself the 80 year old test. So when you 80 years old and you are sitting in a rocking chair, right, you're on your porch and you got your grandbabies around, right. What do you want to be able to say to them about the life that you lived? Right. Do you want to be able to say, well, I sure wish I would have, you know, fill in the blank, you know, or do you want to be able to say, you know what? I didn't get it all right every time, but I had a good time trying. Like, that's what I want my story to be. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, one of my biggest fears in life is having to live with what if. Yes. Yes. I would rather go after it. I would rather say the thing that I'm afraid to say mm-hmm. and deal with the consequences, but I would rather do that than to always wonder, well, what 
could have happened yes. if I had asked that question. Yes. If I had gone after that. Yes. If I had done that yes. difficult thing. Mm-hmm. I can't live with that. I can't. So if it causes me to mm-hmm. you know, fall on my face or lose some stuff or have to pick myself up and start over 25 times, I don't care. I will do it then to know, all right, well, try that didn't work. But at least I know. Not All right, I got a question for you. So um, from the Facebook, um, we have we actually have a question. So it's um, Yushika is one of my high school friends. Hey, Yushika. <laughs> um, she wants she wants to know. She says, um, "I have gotten lost along the way after a divorce, death. I want a church home, but where I have visited, I'm uncomfortable. I feel there is a hold." I desire, so she basically desires to be in leadership. Um, so what, what would you say to her? Because she's um, kind of feels, I think she feels stuck. So let me know, you should if that's what you're really asking. Do you feel like stuck right now because of the different things that you've experienced that weren't quite what you want, what you thought they would be? So I think that's basically her question is that she's feeling kind of stuck. And then how do you move forward when you've had multiple things that, you know, are kind of really devastating happen in your life? Yeah. I think one of, one of the things, and I was just having this conversation with my son who's 21 and um, he's at the point where it's like, well, I have to do this and I'm in my, uh, my prime opportunity to make these things happen. And, and what I was trying to get him to understand is life is always happening. Yes. And you're never going to be in a position where mm-hmm. it will feel like everything is just lining up for you perfectly to, to do and be and accomplish the things you want to. There are always going to be, be hurdles and struggles and challenges. Uh, and so it's just a matter of being able to work through those things. But give yourself some grace too. Uh, dealing with divorce, dealing with death. Yes. Those things are huge emotional tolls. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you've got to allow yourself to grieve, even grieving a marriage. The divorce is like a, a yes. Death. So allowing yourself to grieve and to, mm-hmm. to grow mm-hmm. and to heal because whatever it is that you're looking to move into, you know, that's a position of leadership and ministry, whatever that is. When you bring all of that hurt and pain with yes. you, it will often translate into what it is that you're trying to do. And you're not going to relate to people the way that you typically would. Mm-hmm. You're always seeing, you're seeing life through the mask of your pain. Mm-hmm. So give yourself time to grieve. And, and you may find yourself feeling like you're in that holding pattern where maybe some things aren't happening fast enough for you. Uh, but it's because God is giving you that time to be able to heal yourself and build yourself back up. Because leadership, whether it's ministry, it's in business, it requires so much of you. Yes. So if you're functioning from a place mm-hmm. of, of depletion, then, I mean, you're, you're going to burn out. You're going to burn out. So allow yourself to be filled back up. So, and that, so that's good. So what I, basically what I hear you saying to her is that you – it's not necessarily that she is stuck, that maybe God has given her this time and this season so that he can pour into her, you know, like one-on-one personally before she goes out and starts trying to pour into other people, right? Because you know the whole saying of you can't pour from an empty cup. So you got to, sometimes you you do, you have, we have seasons in life where we have to step back, breathe, <laughs> you know, cry, <laughs> Grieve, yeah. and then we can move forward you know let other people speak into our lives like this is great that you're on here right now Yashika because you're right now you're being poured into right you're being poured up into and there'll be other things that God will do reading his word um spending time with other women that'll encourage you and and build you up and everything like you're saying is so great that sometimes it's not this is the season there is a season of rest Right. And I know you believe in that because you started a whole support group for entrepreneurs around the idea yeah. of rest. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Startup life support is, is all about mm-hmm. making sure that we have what we need before we're giving to the business. Um, but, you know, going back to, to what you were saying too about um, just, you know, pouring from an empty cup. That's one of the things I love so much about your event is, you know, this is an opportunity to be able to come and let yes. folks 
pour into mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. no matter what it is that you're missing or what it is that you need. I love to be able to sit in the audience and just soak it all in. Sometimes I may be on a panel and I get so caught up in <laughs> what else is talking about. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we need that. We need that, and it's worth investing in ourselves to get that. Because if you're trying to accomplish big things, you need to stay filled up. So I just encourage folks if they haven't registered yet uh, to make sure they make that commitment to themselves because you're going to need that fill up for the opportunities that you have for you in 2017. And I'm like, oh, this year 2017. Tell yeah. you there are some opportunities here. <laughs> we talk about living intentionally. Yes. This, so I'm going to lead into the, the last point of this because this is where it, it really matters. You know, making sure that your your actions line up with your intention. Mm-hmm. So you know what you yes. want. Yes. Yes. You said, you know what? Forget mm-hmm. it. I'm going after it. I'm going full out. The thing that you really need to focus on is making sure that the things that you're spending your time and your energy on line up. Look at your calendar. Look at your schedule on a day-to-day. Like, so go home, to, like when you get ready to go to bed tonight, just stay in the bed and reflect over your day. How you spent your time. Think about the past week, how you spent your time. How much of that time was actually devoted to what you say you want? Whether that's you say you want a stronger marriage, you yes. say you want to be more physically fit, mm-hmm. whatever you say you want a stronger relationship with God, what are you doing in your schedule that lines up with those intentions? And if you're not spending time on it, if you're not spending energy on it, don't expect to see it happen. Absolutely. I, I'm so glad you said that because I just kind of have this motto that inspiration is not enough right? Inspiration only takes you so far in life. There has to come a point where you stop, you know, don't stop being excited. Keep being excited because that helps, that helps keep the momentum, right? But you got to move. You got to do something. And that's what you're talking about is you got to put some action behind what you want to see happen in your life. If you want to live an intentional life, you're going to have to move. Like you can't sit still and think, oh, I'm going to live this intentional life. No, it doesn't work that way. It's, it requires action on your part. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, then it goes back to, again, lazy faith. You mm-hmm. cannot have lazy faith. Yes. You can believe God for something all day long, but mm-hmm. what are you doing? Yes. What are you, he is not going to do for you what you can do for yourself. And so that's going to mean that you got to make some difficult decisions. Mm-hmm. You're going to inconvenience yourself. You're yes. going to have to be uncomfortable. Yes. The thing about it, though, and I was, I was doing a work a video last night, and I normally work out in the morning, and <laughs> 10 o'clock at night, and I'm just not exercising when I'm normally already in the bed. And mm-hmm. one of the things that stuck with me is this isn't going to get easier, but you get better. That's good. I love that. It's so not going to get easier, but you're going to get better. Right. <laughs> just think about that. Think about that in anything that you've done in life. Mm-hmm. the beginning of If you had a baby, when you brought that little baby home that first week and you were sleep deprived and you're like, like oh, mm-hmm. Lord, I'm going to die. And then over time or by baby number two or you know like okay yeah i'm tired but i i got this thing now i got this thing. yes <laughs> yes that is <laughs> oh that's good <laughs> one half time. i know there was a time when it probably was difficult for you to run around the block he turned around and ran 13 miles it didn't get easier yes yes girl that'll preach right there let me <laughs> I'm like, I feel like, let's pass the offering plate to Coach Aisha. (laughs) (laughs) That is, oh my goodness. Yes. Okay, let's let that just, sometimes you just need to marinate and stuff for a second. (laughs) Just let that marinate. It may not get easier, but you will get better. To me, like, this is something I want to talk about at the event. Um... The you are stronger than you think, that whole tagline. Um, I think sometimes people misinterpret that to mean that you never hurt, you don't have pain. If you do push your pain to the side, just get over it. That's not what you are stronger than you think means. It's about growth. 
And it's very much about what you just said about it's not that things in life necessarily get easier because they don't always. I mean, there are situations in your life that can actually go on for years at a time. I do believe what the Bible says about joy comes in the morning. So weeping endures for a night. So so nothing will last forever. Right. But there are seasons where things last longer than you want them to. And they don't get easier, but you do get stronger. You get stronger because of the things that you've been through. And then you start to see God working in your life. And that is when you realize, you know what? I'm stronger than I thought I was. And I think that's why what you, when you just said that, it just really resonated in my heart. And that's why I was like, let's pass this offering. <laughs> because I mean, that to me, that is kind of like the essence of what you are stronger than you think it's all about is the fact that that things in life, some things in life are difficult to get through, but you will get better in the process. You will get stronger. And the strength that you gain from the things that you've gone through will help you in the next situation, the next thing that you're dealing with. So, and, um, so this has been great. And you know, I could, I really could talk to you all night long, but I kind of, I want to hold um, with a hold up to my promise, basically with these um, interview sessions, I call them mini skirt messages, like our pastor calls it, where it is, uh, what, do he, what does he call it? He says it's long enough to cover you, but short enough to keep you interested. <laughs> so, so, so this is just a little teeny tiny taste of what you will get if you come and join us. See, we're going to have a great time. There is like no pretense. This is all about friends. Um, being there to help each other, to mentor each other, to support each other. Um, we're just taking what we've been doing online and taking it offline so that we can see each other face to face, heart to heart, and really support each other on this journey. And I'm hoping that you have seen enough that you want to um, join us on this journey. So I'm going to tell you the website one more time. If you want to register for the event, it's stronger than you think event.com stronger than you think event.com and during this series what we've been doing is we've been offering a special so the normal rate right now for registration is $59 and that is going to actually end this coming Monday so there's really only four more days to actually register um, for the event at that rate of $59 and then the price will increase for like two to three days and then registration will close completely um, as we're um, preparing for everyone that's coming but you can get $10 off the regular adult registration right now um, if when you use the coupon code 2017 strong, when you use the coupon code 2017 strong, you will get $10 off the regular adult registration. And that offer will expire at midnight on January 13th, which is this Friday night after our very last interview that, that midnight of that night, we're going to go ahead and close, um, that coupon code and that, and that will no longer be available. So if you are as excited as we are and you are ready to take the next step, you can register today at stronger than you think event.com. Um, so as we kind of wrap this up, coach Aisha, we are going to do a giveaway. And since we have people actually watching us on Facebook live, I'm so excited about that. I want to give them an opportunity to win this. So coach Aisha, tell them what they're going to win. They are going to win a copy of my book. I want to win being you. Woohoo! <laughs> And I'll tell you, and this is this book, one of the reasons I wrote this was because I had people that were like, okay, I'm not in a position to invest in coaching right. Mm -hmm. And so I wrote this book as essentially a coaching manual for mm -hmm. you. So at the end of the chapters, there are questions that are going to tear you up. <laughs> <laughs> but I promise if you put in the work again, we talked about that, you're going to see uh, a big difference. That is so awesome. So all you have to do if you want to win Coach Aisha's book is on Facebook. All you have to do is leave a comment telling us one thing that you're going to do in the next 30 days that is going to help you live a more intentional life. So just one thing in the next 30 days that you plan to do. And then my husband will choose the winner because I want to be out. My hands are out of it. I'm not, I'm not getting in trouble with y'all. I'm, I'm putting it all on him. So if you leave that comment, we will um, reach out to you once we 
read back through the comments once I have a chance to read back through the comments after this ends. And then we'll choose the winner and we will get that book to the winner. All righty. So thank you so much, Coach Aisha. I'm so excited. I'm thankful, very grateful to have you as the MC for our event. We're going to have so much fun. We always have a good time together. So yes, <laughs> this, this, will, this will be no exception whatsoever. So all right. Um, that, so that's pretty much it for tonight. And remember, until next time, oh, you know what? I always forget to do this next, tomorrow night. So come back again tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. So we still have two interviews left. So Thursday night and Friday night, we have two interviews left. Now, the, the, this is amazing. What, what are you showing me? <laughs> Yay! Because <laughs> they can only see you, right? They can only see you. So um, I want to, um, so, so tomorrow night, we actually have, so I actually resigned from my job last year. The owner of the company, the founder of the company, not the owner, but the founder of that company, she's going to be speaking on a panel at my event this year. And I'm so excited. She actually built a multi-million dollar business in less than 10 years. And um, so she's going to be on the panel for Entrepreneurial Women, the one that Coach Aisha is going to be leading and facilitating. And her name is Stacy Karen. So we're going to we're going to interview her tonight. Tomorrow night, we're going to talk about reinventing yourself because she knows a lot about reinventing yourself. Where if you've you know had different transitions in your life and you and you find yourself, you know, I used to do this and now I'm doing this, and and I don't know what to do with myself. So. Stacy is the perfect person. And then Friday night. So I'm telling y'all, set your timer for tomorrow night, Thursday at 6 p.m. And Friday night, you do not want to miss these interviews. Jane Spicer. There are these head covers that come on golf clubs. Tiger Woods has one. This woman started a company when she was 10 or 11 years old. And here we are 38 years later. She's still running that business. Her business took off when Tiger Woods' mom, um, she would give him those head covers for the golf clubs. And then what happened was when he became t the Tiger Woods, the one who was winning all these PGA tours and, you know, just the, the man, people saw his head covers and they wanted them. And her business in one day, it just took off. And she's going to be also on that panel with Coach Aisha at the event. And she's going to be on this session, I'm going to interview her on Friday night. So have your questions ready tomorrow night for Stacy and Friday night for Jane, and we're going to have a great time. All right, y'all. Remember, success is achieved through perseverance. So never, never, never give up. God bless you, and you have a great day. Good night. <laughs>